Good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about two paired bones that you have as part of your skull that are very important in helping you function well or on the other side of the coin, not helping you feel very well at all. We're going to talk about both those things today. Here's information on your temple bones. So your temporal bones are part of your skull. You have a right temporal bone and a left temporal bone, and they sit right here on the outside of your skull. And uh, they're important for lots of reasons, including the structures that are housed in them, uh, the muscles that attach to them, uh, the other bones that they attach to, and the things that go through them. There's holes in this bone that, that have nerves and vessels that go through them. And so the function and the position of this temporal bone is very important for lots of different things. The most well-known thing that the temporal bone is known for is what's called your temporomandibular joint. We've heard of your temporomandibular joint, your TMJ joint. It's where your jaw socket attaches to your cranium. It's a hinge joint, and it's managed, managed a lot through uh, help from a dentist based on the way that your teeth fit has an impact on that temporomandibular joint. Part of the reason we work a lot with dentists is to help manage that, that joint, but more importantly, we're utilizing dentists through that joint to help manage everything associated with that temporal bone. And so today I want to talk about all these things that are attached to and run through and, and are uh, touching this temporal bone because all those things can either be improved in their function or reduced in their function based on the position and the, and the function of, and mobility of that bone itself. Um, in addition to that TMJ joint that we just talked about, the temporal bone itself houses your ear canal, which is your mechanism for hearing and for balance. So your inner and middle ear are actually just embedded within that bone. So the position of that bone or anything that's affecting that bone is going to have an impact on your hearing and your balance. So if you've got ringing in your ears or difficulty with balance, vertigo, dizziness, we start thinking about your temporal bone. The inside of the temporal bone is pushing right up against your temporal lobe of your brain, which is where hearing, uh, speech, language development, sensory processing issues all goes through that part of your brain. So there should be some ability for that bone to be able to decompress and not have a lot of pressure on that part of your brain. So if somebody were to have a stroke that area, that would be a temporal stroke. Those are the kinds of things that we can talk about. It's not directly related to that bone, but it's right in that same area. There's a lot of muscles that attach to this bone. The biggest part that we think about this is this part of the bone called the mastoid process. That's the bump of that bone right behind your ear. And along that, that bump, you can see on this particular skull, all these, these colored pieces are where muscles attach. But on that bump, you have several muscles that attach to that bone that are actually running down to your neck. Your sternoclast, sternocleidomastoid attaches here and runs from that bone down to your collarbone and your sternum. And it's really the muscle we think about when we say the word neck. You say the word neck, you're thinking about that. There's two bones that attach to the back, two muscles attached to the back of it, your splenius capitis and your longissimus capitis that run from your temporal bone, your mastoid, to your spinous processes and your transverse process of your upper, upper thoracic and lower cervical spine. So upper back and neck pain or tension can have an impact on your temporal bone or your temporal bone can have an impact on your neck and your upper back. So if you've got tension and tightness in your upper back and who doesn't, that could be related or could be causing some issues with your temporal bone. There's another muscle in here that, that attaches to your temporal bone called your digastric and it runs from your temporal bone through your hyoid to the front of your mandible and it helps you with swallowing and function of your mandible itself. So swallowing issues could be impacted or impacting the temporal bone. On this side of that temporal bone, you can kind of see this little spike protrusion. That's called the styloid process. I'm having to break off on this side on our model. But anytime you see a, a process like that, a spike, that's a spot for muscle attachment. You have two or three important muscles that attach to that, which is part of your temporal bone, that run from that, your styloid process, to your tongue, your styloglossus. So your tongue function is affected by and can affect your temporal bone. Your stylopharyngeus, your pharynx, is your voice box. So voice, voice issues, vocal cord dysfunction, has muscles that attach to your temporal bone. And your um, stylohyoid, which is, again, a swallowing muscle, attaches to that part of that bone. So 
again, tongue function, swallowing, speaking, all is temporal in its ability to be managed by or not managed by that system. We often think about clenching and grinding. This red piece here is where your temporalis muscle attaches or attaches to the big part of your temporal bone. And so people who crunch and grind are going to have temporal issues, temporal bone issues. That's an important one. And then there's two others that are kind of deep inside here. One that we don't think about too much, but it's a muscle called your levator veli palatini. And it's, a, it's responsible for elevating, levator, your palate. So it attaches into your soft palate and is responsible for helping you with keeping your airway open and keeping your palate mobile for, again, airway management, breathing, speech, swallowing, all kinds of oral pharyngeal activities. So temporal bone, temporal management is impacting and does impact your palate. We have a lot of people really excited about palates and expanding them and raising them and making sure there's room. That's temporal bone related. So if we're not looking at your temporal bone, it's hard to manage your palate. And inside that temporal bone, again, in, the, in your ear canal is a muscle called your tensor tympani. It's a muscle that helps control the tension of your eardrum. And if it's not managed well, it can give you tightness on your eardrum, which can either make you really hypersensitive to sound or give you a constant ringing or buzzing in your ear. So tinnitus activity could be related to temporal bone dysfunction. So any of those other things that we talked about could all have an impact on the ringing in your ears. Swallowing issues, speaking issues, neck issues, all can impact each of those different symptoms. So that's both sides of the coin. We can manage it well and help those issues, or we can not manage it well, and, and those things can impact all each other. Indirectly, uh, now, as far as bones that attach to this, so if this bone is moving, it obviously has impact on other bones around it. One that it, that it impacts is your occiput bone. Your occipital bone is the base of your skull. This hole on your occipital bone is where your brain stem comes out and your spinal cord comes out. And if that area is not managed because of some temporal issues, because there's a relationship there, you could get some brain stem issues. That's called dysautonomia. Uh, these muscles attached here, if they get irritated, those are called headaches. So if you have headaches and upper neck tension, uh, dysautonomia, that can be all temporal related. And on the inside of the head, there's a, mu a big important muscle bone called your sphenoid bone. And your sphenoid bone is really houses the, the base of your uh, midbrain or the area of your brain that's responsible for a lot of uh, autonomic function and, central and, and processing of information as it comes in and leaves your brain. And if that bone is not managed well, you can have all kinds of, of dysautonomic symptoms. Um, and of course, the top of your skull is associated with it. And then this bone called your zygoma bone, which is your eye socket, is also impacted by your temporal bone. Lastly, I want to talk about some holes that run through that bone. There's a, there's a couple of them that, that uh, when we start thinking about it, become important. One is called your jugular fossa. You've heard of your jugular vein. It drains the blood out of your, out of your skull. Uh, it runs through your, directly through your temporal bone, along with three cranial nerves. Cranial nerve number 9, number 10, and number 11. 9 is the cranial nerve that controls your tongue. 10 is your vagus nerve, which is, again, an autonomic nerve. Uh, there's a lot of excitement about vagus nerve issues. That vagus nerve runs right through your temporal bone. So uh, if you're really worried about vagus issues down here, if you don't have good control and position of your temporal bone, that could be a problem. Uh, and cranial nerve number 11 is a muscle, the nerve that controls your upper trap. creates either tension or, or difficulty with utilizing your upper trap well. Uh, there's also a hole for your carotid artery, which is the, the main artery that puts blood into your brain. And along with your carotid artery, you have two more cranial nerves, cranial nerve number seven and number eight. Seven is your facial nerve, innervates your face, um, gives you feeling and sensation and muscle activity in your face. If you've seen somebody with Bell's palsy, they have a drooped face because of issues with the facial nerve. Uh, and the number eight is your vestibular cochlear nerve, which is, again, control of your hearing and your balance. Again, all related to that temporal bone, both in the structure and also now in the nerve function. Uh, and as we talked about, that eustachian tube and your ear canal is another one. So as we think about all these things, the muscles that attach here that run to all these various locations, the bones that attach to it, the structures that course through it, and the things that are attached to it, getting good management of those temporal bones through your jaw, which is why we utilize a lot of dentists, your mandible, the muscles that attach to it, which are your neck muscles, your swallowing muscles, your speaking muscles, uh, and the ability to manage balance between the two sides, which is what we talk about with a lot of things, is all important for all those different things that we talked about, looking at both the good and the bad, both sides of those coins. I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of information, but uh, I've had a few patients recently that, that have had some temporal bone issues. 
uh, and we get various symptoms because of that. Um, and with our prime pa patients that we see that come from, from out of the state, out of the country, a lot of them have dental integration issues that do relate to temporal bone problems and they have some unrelated symptoms that come in with that. So part of the reason that, again, we utilize dentistry so much is to manage that temporal bone for all those things that we just went over. So again, I appreciate you listening. If you have questions about temporal bones or other ways that we manage it, we'll talk probably more about how we might look at managing that temporal bone beyond just integrating with dentists with some activities that you can do. Um, just let me know, give us a comment, and we'll go from there. Uh, thanks so much, and I look forward to talking to you more. Thanks.